Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three tips that save me so much time when making films and animation in Unreal Engine. I have found Unreal Engine to be an incredible tool for this process of making animation, making films, but these tips here have saved me a lot of time along the way, and I hope they will help you as well. If you are new to Unreal Engine and you wanna make films and animation with it, I have a free training for you, which you can find below this video that takes you through the full process, demystifies it, and uh, if you're into that, you can find that in the link below this video. All right, so let's jump into the first tip. Tip number one is to use spawnable objects in Sequencer. So I have a shot here in Unreal Engine and I have a character who's animating, camera that's animating, and the problem arises when you might have multiple characters or multiple objects in different shots, but they're all existing in the same environment or the same level. In this case, I have this character who's in this shot and maybe I don't necessarily want that character to be in another shot, but if we come outside of the shot, he is a existing always inside of our level. So what do we do? So do we take him when we don't want him to be in shot and just animate him to be below the floor or something like that? No, that's not very efficient and there's a lot easier way to achieve the exact same result. If we come over here to our shot and sequencer here, and this can be done to literally any object that we have in our level and that we've also added to sequencer. So here you can see my character in the bottom left corner. And if I right click on the character, I can come up here and choose convert to spawn. You will notice it will switch to being a normal icon for that character, in this case a skeletal mesh, to the same icon with a little thunderbolt or electricity bolt over top of the logo. And that means if we close the sequencer or close the shot we're working on, anything that is switched to be a spawnable object like that will disappear. And it will only be loaded when we actually load that sequence. So that's the way you can have multiple characters in multiple different shots, and they're only going to appear in the shot that they're supposed to be in. You can always switch the character or object back to something that will always exist in your level by coming back to it and right clicking and coming to convert to possessable. The lightning bolt will disappear. It will go back to being something that will always exist in your level no matter what sequence or shot you have open. This process also works for cameras. So if you don't want to have 500 cameras in your content browser at all times, you can switch them to spawnable cameras in your sequencer. In fact, when you create a camera using this button here in sequencer, which I did when making this sequence, you'll see that it is a spawnable object by default. This is a much cleaner way of working and one I recommend you adopting when setting up all of your shots. Now this leads straight into tip number two, which is to use nested sequences. In my case, I've set up two individual shots of this night walking cinematically into the desert. I have this first shot that I showed you just now, and I have shot two, which is a reverse shot. And in the past, the way I would have set this up, it was to use a single sequence. I would have set up the camera from one position, and then I would have come to the end here and made a new camera in the same sequence and then positioned it in a different position. Now, this can be fine for one or two shots, but when you start to have a much longer sequence, maybe five, 10, 20 shots in the same sequence, and then in each of those sequences, you have things animating, characters, objects, and they're all existing in this one sequence and it's getting longer and longer and taller and taller. That's when it starts to get very complicated very quickly. So the fix for this is to take these two shots, make them as separate sequences, then to make a new sequence, which I will come and do here by right clicking, coming to cinematics and choosing level sequence. I'll call this LS underscore master sequence and I will double click that sequence to open it. Now I will add those two sequences with separate camera angles to this master sequence as nested sequences. That's easily done by coming up to the track plus button here and adding a shot track, so not a camera cut track, but a shot track. Now I can come to the content browser, take my shot one that I have here, drag it over into my sequencer. And if we come and click on the camera icon here, we can see it's playing through correctly. Now we can come to our shot two, drag it over to our sequencer and put it at the end here. And I'll make my sequence sequence a bit longer here. And now you can see it's playing from one sequence and cutting automatically to the next sequence as if it would in an editing software, for example. And if I ever want to go in and edit the stuff in these individual shots, all I need to do is double click on the shot and it will open it. In fact, you can even see in the top right corner here of your sequencer, you can see which sequence is inside of which one. So if I want to come back to the master sequence, I can just click it up here or double click on this one and you can nest sequences 
to as many levels as you'd like. We can make another nested sequence within this one just for our camera animation, for example. It's a much cleaner way to work and you can see that we can edit in our master sequence here without having to worry about all the animation inside of each of those shots. If you're familiar with After Effects, this is a very similar workflow to nesting sequence inside of After Effects. And I really recommend you start working this way when you have more than one sequence or shot, which leads straight into tip number three, which is to render render your master sequences with multiple shots inside of it so that they render out as separate shots. So you can render once through and it will just render out each individual shot separately so you can load them into your editing software later. So it's not just one big giant render. If I come back in here to my master sequence, I can have as many shots in here at once as I want. And I can come up to the movie render queue here with this button. Click on the settings button right here to change your render settings. Come to the output section here. This is where you tell it what you want the actual renders to be named as files. And by default, it is sequence name and then frame number. You absolutely need frame number, of course, so that you can string it together as an image sequence later. But if you want to switch it from being a sequence name, because if we just rendered this out as sequence name, it would literally say master sequence, which isn't super helpful to us. What we want is shot name. So if I come to this section in between the curly brackets here and I start to type shot, we see we have a few options here. And if we just choose shot name here, it will replace sequence name with shot name. And now when I render this master sequence out, it will name each shot as its own render with the name of the sub sequence that we made and added into our master sequence. We'll keep them separate. Once we render out our shot, if we come over here to something like DaVinci Resolve, we can see that these shots have been rendered all at once, but they've been named as separate sequences so we can drag them in and use them as separate shots. Now, if we come over here to something like DaVinci Resolve, we can see that each shot has been rendered separately. So it's been named separately so we can drag it in and use them as separate shots in whatever editing software you're using, but we can still render it all at once. So you don't have to go into each individual shot and render it separately. If you're not sure how to use an editing software like DaVinci Resolve to put your renders together and export a finished movie file, I have a tutorial which you'll find right here on how to do that. Either way, I hope you found this video helpful. Throw me a thumbs up and a comment if you did so I know to make more and the algorithm knows to share it to more people and I will see you in the next one.